<laughs> okay. okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lisa Olsenowski with Office Centers and Virtual Office Centers. And I'd like to welcome all of you here at International Plaza, as well as all of our other four locations, to our Power Lunch. Are we going to have fun or what? We are I'm thrilled that y'all get to enjoy some pizza, and we get to listen to an awesome presentation by none other than one of our very favorite virtual office centers clients, Joe Pepka. And I have an opportunity to introduce him, and it's my pleasure. Joe Pepka has worked in computer support for over 20 years. You're not that old, right, Joe? No. <laughs> He's a graduate of NDSU, where he studied electric engineering. There's more NDSU guys in the house. Yep. Woo his passion with the mechanism of technology led him to start his, start his own IT support company, none other than Petronics. Joe's extensive combined experience with the corporate world and technology gives him the knowledge to conduct daily businesses smoothly and professionally. Joe works with micro businesses in helping them operate effectively with use of technology, one of them being virtual office centers. Thank you very much. He assists companies that are paper heavy to become paper dependent. Paper less paper dependent. By converting and simplifying their lives with technology, <coughs> Joe aids in bringing his clients up to date with the latest email, fax, data, filing systems, and print options. Joe also helps companies eliminate repetitious tasks, calls, volumes, and office visits. He does this by syncing company access to emails, calendars, <laughs> social networking, and mobile devices. And we enjoy that at office centers too. He uses preventative approaches in computer maintenance to ensure a, vi a virus-free and confidential work environment. Joe's the kind of guy that wants the best for himself and his clients, and that rings true. After all, his infamous slogan with Peptronics is, we take the SH out of IT. So anyone who's looking for a hole-in-one technical professional, Joe's an ace, and he's going to share with us everything that we need to know about Windows 10. Yep. Let's hear it for Joe. Woo Hi, Joe. Thanks. All right. Uh, well, Lisa did a pretty good job on covering my background, where I came from, what I've done. Um, about four years ago, I started my own company. Well, actually, I shouldn't say that. In 1994, I started Peptronics. Um, so I've been doing Peptronics since 1994, over 20 years. Um, I've actually been doing it full time for the last four years. So I've been working with clients, uh, building my database, and helping people out and get uh, knowledge of technology and integrating different things back and forth uh, since uh, 2011. So with that, we'll get going on our presentation. And as you know, Windows 10 came out in July, uh, July 29th of this year. Uh, and Microsoft says that we finally fixed everything. I don't know if I'd fly a plane, ride a plane like that, but it might, it might be okay today. Um, so we'll kind of go over some of the history, uh, Windows 8, 8.1. We'll cover Windows 10, the desktop. We'll look at Cortana, Microsoft Edge. Wi-Fi Sense, and then I'm going to do a live demo, and then during the live demo, we'll take questions. If you guys have questions at the virtual centers as we're going through and there's something you want to see in the live demo, please let uh, your center manager know and text on over, or they can get the question on over so we can look at that in the live demo as well with the summary. At the very end, we'll answer any other questions that anybody else has. Um, so, according to Wikipedia, Microsoft 8 was released on October 26th of 2012, and uh, that was probably one of the worst releases they've had in a long time. There was a lot of backlash. Um, what Microsoft was trying to do with Windows 8 is iPads were very popular, and they were tr really trying to go after the iPad environment of trying to have that app type interface, user interface. and what Microsoft didn't realize is there's a lot of people in the business world that don't necessarily need that app interface. It's great for iPads and great for tablets, um, depending on how it's used, but overall that app interface just is not 
wasn't wasn't meant for the business world. So they came out like less than a year, October 17th of 2012, they came out with a free upgrade to Windows 8.1. So anybody that was running Windows 8 got a free upgrade to Windows 8.1 uh, less than a year later, and that fixed a few things. That gave you back the start menu and a few other things, but it didn't give you the Windows 7 interface that a lot of people were accustomed to in Windows in Windows uh, from Windows 7. So at that point, this, if you guys remember, this is the start screen for Windows 8. Basically, had all the tile views. There was no start menu down there at the bottom. The only way you could power off is you had to pull the mouse to the far right side to power off and change your settings along that lines. Then we come to Windows 8.1, and here you get your at least you get your start menu back, which then brings up depending on how you set up Windows 8.1, you can set it up in this tile mode where you could actually see all the applications, or you still have those big tiles like there was in Windows 8. Um, this, this made things a lot more easier for a majority of people, but it still didn't fix the over underlying issues. Um, so then Microsoft came out with Windows 10. They were, there's a lot of <laughs> mystery in why they went from, it missed Windows, went from Windows 8, 1 to Windows 10. And some of that comes into play. Uh, one of the things is if you have some old, really old applications that you're still running, which hopefully nobody still is, but that would still recognize Windows 95 or Windows 98. So that's one of the reasons why they didn't go with Windows 9, because it would confuse people. Windows 95 and 98 was ever been in the industry long enough to know that. Um, but then they also wanted to distance themselves really well between Windows 8 and Windows 10. They didn't want that intermediate step, they wanted to show a big jump in between. So that's why they went to the Windows 10 naming. And what they're really trying to do is they're trying to get to one operating system runs on all the different platforms. So whether you have a tablet, a phone, a smartphone, the tablets, the, uh, the individual tablets, the foldable tablets that still a laptop, the full desktop, and then back up to even the big screens. So they're trying to get that all under one environment to allow them to only make minor changes to be able to develop across all the platforms, all the different types of devices. And so here's the Windows 10 interface. This is my actual laptop uh, picture. So what they've done is they brought the start menu back here, and then they've got your, basically, if you remember the in Windows 7, they've got the all programs and your start menu there. But then they left, the nice thing is they did leave the apps on the side as well, which is really kind of nice. As you can see, I've got mine configured to show the weather there. You can figure your calendar, your mail, um, and other things to go along with that. And then within here, click on all apps, and you'll show all of your apps that are in there in alphabetical order, just like it was in Windows 7. Uh, one of the bad things um, that Microsoft has, if you're upgrading from Windows 7 or 8 to Windows 10, and let's say you've got a lot of programs installed, there's a limitation of uh, 512 different apps that will show in there. So you do have a limitation there. It's not real not real difficult, but there is that limitation there from that perspective. Okay? So here's a, here's a blow up of the app screen. You can customize this apps on here to be any one of the apps that you want. Uh, you can put your Netflix app. You can put your, you can pull your stock up there if you want to look at money. Quick news, it's just a real quick, easy way to kind of see what's going on in the world if you want or what's in, going on in your life, uh, which is really nice. Um, and then down here at the bottom um, is the new thing that Microsoft is trying to implement. Everybody is knows about Siri with the Apple, and then you've got the Google, I don't remember the name for the Google one, uh, that does your voice to text. Um, Microsoft has come out with Cortana, uh, which is down here, uh, allows you to do searching the web and your windows, and you can also do voice texting or uh, type of communication into there, and it will do uh, simple tasks for you. So Cortana is the voice recognition software that allows you to be able to um, do set scheduling appointments and do some simplistic things. It's not as advanced as Siri, 
Um, and a lot of people are thinking, well, if I'm sitting at a desktop, why would I really want to do voice activation? As you, uh, as things become more and more web independent and you start doing things where you're going to have a cam camera in front of you doing web chats and stuff like that, you're already going to have the microphone there. Well, it's a lot easier sometimes to talk to it than to, to, than to sit down and type. Um, we're going to become more and more, as technology continues to grow and the voice recognition and the software becomes better, you're going to find more and more um, advantages to having that um, quick chat into your device, whether it's your PC that you're sitting at, whether it's your phone, your Android, or whatever along those lines. Okay. Um, then, so Microsoft has finally killed, well, I shouldn't say killed, they are removing Internet 11 from being default. It's still installed. Um, they've come up with a new browser called Microsoft Edge. So what they did with Microsoft Edge is they've taken that away and gone in the background and basically kind of rewrote it. So they took a lot of the compatibility out of Internet Explorer. Um, Internet Explorer was a lot of backwards compatibility because there were a lot of old websites and different things that applications people have written for Internet Explorer. They removed a lot of that back-end compatibility. So now they are doing, they're going more streamlined like Google Chrome, trying to get better at that to make our, your whole web experience a lot better. And when that happens, um, your things, everything will become uh, faster and hopefully less glitchy when you go to websites to run the Java applets and stuff like that. Hopefully they'll get away from that. It'll be just true embedded, um, I'm trying to think of the word, the truly embedded video stuff that goes on in the web. Um, and then with that, uh, okay, so there's one thing, there's one thing that they added that's kind of um, unique in Windows is everybody's got pretty much laptops that are portable. So what they've allowed you to do is um, what's called Wi-Fi Sense. So basically when I go to office centers, I can log into their, to their wireless network. It'll save that password. And with this turned on, with Wi-Fi wi wi Sense turned on, you can share that network with your contacts. So let's say Amanda came into my home office. If I had Wi-Fi Sense turned on and she's one of my Outlook contacts, she could automatically connect into my network at home and have access to everything there. So that's one of the things that I turn off right away when anybody is doing, um, when, any, when I set anybody up to get that turned off. And it's right here, uh, connect, to open, uh, to connect to network shared by my contacts. Turn that off on Windows 10. Because if you don't have that on, then you can't share your contacts. Your contacts won't see the networks that you've been to and automatically connect to them as well. So it's kind of a, a feature that's it's nice to share that information, um, but yet at the same time, I don't really want them to necessarily know all the networks I'm at or have the passwords to get into it. So that's one of the one of the potential security holes um, that could that could come up, especially if you do with Facebook friends. Uh, Outlook contacts maybe a little bit better, but Facebook friends, um, I don't know if I'd want to share everything with everybody there. So, any questions? Does anybody have any questions about what we've covered so far? Yes, Mark. Is that going to be a tiered sort of thing in the future, potentially, where there's a close group that you can allow, family, that sort of thing? Probably. They pro they probably will work at that the next iteration, inter iteration on that as well. Um, oh, one other thing, too, is with Windows 10, they gave it um, free starting July 29th of this year till July 29th of 2016. So if you do the upgrade in that time frame, you'll get it for free. If you go online and try to upgrade on July 30th of next year, you will no longer get the upgrade for free. You'll have to pay the $130 to do the upgrade. So if you're interested in doing the upgrade and want to wait to see how any bugs that come out or any issues that come out in the next few months, wait. Um, but if you want to, if you're thinking about, you've got a newer laptop that's running eight, eight or eight point one. I definitely recommend upgrading to Windows 10. You'll get back to that uh, Windows 7 interface, 
which is a lot more handier for most people. But if you're if you're at Windows 7 and just kind of want to your lab your PC or device is in that three to four year time frame, you just want to ride it out for a couple more years. Then I then necessarily upgrading Windows 10 is not a huge deal. I've upgraded um, let's see probably a dozen or more different devices. Um, I ran into a couple of problems. Um, one one of the issues that I ran into is when you upgrade to Windows 10, um, you're, you can't go in and modify the resolution of your monitor. It goes to the high, high res on there. What you end up having to do is you have to go into the device manager and update the video driver and have the, the device pull down that video, the current video driver from the manufacturer, whether it's NVIDIA, uh, the Lenovo laptops or the different manufacturers, and that will allow you then to be able to adjust your resolution to whatever size you have. My laptop um, defaults at a 3200 by 1800, and on that little 14-inch screen, I even have to almost get out my reading glasses to see on there because um, it goes so small. But once I updated the driver, then I was able to get it back to the 1920 by 1080. Uh, resolution, which is where I like to have things at. Uh, one other one, let's see what was the other one. One other issue that I've ran into and I quite haven't quite figured out yet is it'll go through, it looks like it's doing a complete upgrade, but then it goes to a black screen at the probably 80 to 90 percent range, and then about an hour later the system will reboot and it will restore back to Windows, Windows 7 or Windows 8, whatever you were last at. Um, there's something I think in the downloads that's preventing it from fully upgrading. But if you ever run into that, you can always go back. And that's that's true with even if you do upgrade. Let's say you upgrade from Windows 8.1 to Windows 10, and you're going through and you're going, I really don't like this. I want to go back. You can go back to restore back to your previous version, and you'll get back to Windows 8 the way you left it the day that you upgraded it. And you won't lose any of your files. You maybe lose you may lose some applications that you've installed in that time frame, but you won't lose any of your data for any of that stuff. So it's, that's a nice feature. It allows you to go backwards in uh, in time. Do you have so, any questions from others? Sure. Network? Yeah. Was, um, is Windows 10 compatible with older programs, such as Microsoft Office, like the older Office program? Um, Office 2010 is compatible. I, I personally ran Office 2010 on Windows 10 and had no problems. Uh, 2013 is out, and 2016 is coming out within the next month or so. So there is some backwards compatibility. 2007, I don't know if it would run on Windows 10, but um, backwards compatibility from there should be just fine. If you don't use Outlook, can your Google and Yahoo contacts um, use Wi-Fi Sense the same way? So if you're not using Outlook for your contacts? Um, no, because they're not integrated. Outlook, the, the Wi-Fi Sense. Um, only works with your Outlook or the, the three items that were checkbar, not the Google ones. Okay. 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 Any other questions here? Yes. Um, one of the nice features that Windows 7 had that I liked was something called PC transfer. Okay. If you buy a new computer, you can move everything over. Yep. Will Windows 10 bring that back? Um, okay, so the question was in Windows 7, there's a program, or the, built in, there's an easy transfer function that allows you to transfer your stuff from one computer to the next. Um, what I I don't know if that's in Windows 10 or not. I don't know if that's there. Um, and I don't recommend that. And the reason why is because when you go from one PC to another, usually it's <laughs> hardware changes. So you have enough hardware changes that I, that I recommend almost, it, it's a pain, but you'll have a better You'll have a better overall experience if you if you reinstall your apps on your new PC. I don't think easy transfer allows you to remove apps. You do have to reinstall yeah. those. So I'm talking about data files. So it's very really easy to move them over. They end up where they were on your old computer, your desktop. Okay. Pretty much the same. Okay. I'll have to check into that. That I don't know. I don't only answer that on the, from the data files. I know the way I usually do it is I just move it from one place to the spot. And I know where those spots are, but I do deal with it every day in and out. I'll have to check on that. You want to write that down as a thing for a follow mm -hmm. um, from that perspective. Anybody else have any other questions here? All right. Well, let's get going to the live demo. And as I'm doing some of the stuff, showing you guys some of this stuff, 
uh, please feel free to ask questions as we're going along as well. So I want to make sure that you guys get all your questions answered and can see things that are running live. So. <laughs> Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. So now, yep, perfect. We're sharing. Good. Okay. So now, um, if you come down here at the bottom, let's say you want to go something to the Star and Tribune, um, you can go ahead and just type it, and it'll automatically bring up stuff related to the web. So. The internet search down at the bottom, search web and windows, will search both your local computer and the web for any things that you're looking for. So if you have something that you want to be specific about, yes? Can you turn off the web search and just go back to your, your computer? The, fir the, you, the first part will always pull up your computer stuff. I don't know if you can turn off the web portion for the search, but it will go through <coughs> everything at the top. So when I typed in, like when I typed in Internet Explorer, it will it will pull up anything that's related uh, to my computer. So you see, it pulls up internet settings, and then it starts going to web, and then it shows documents down underneath that. Well, oftentimes if I do a search on eight point one for a file on my computer, it'll find my file, but after it's found everything on the internet first, which right. I'm not interested in. Right. I'd like to get rid of that clutter. Um, I can see. Write that down as a question to follow. I'll follow up with you on that question as well. I don't know on that. But uh, that might be possible as well. Um, let's see. And this is where you could do the voice to text. So you can go ahead in here and set this up um, to, to do your voice. So she, so Cortana can do your voice stuff as well. Um, and let's see what else. Is there anything else? Uh, okay, so somebody was asking about um, so there's two different ways to get through things. Um, settings, which is the which is the newer where they're trying to get people to to go to. It's kind of like control panel, but not quite. Um, you can get through things so you can go to accounts and you can look at your different accounts, accounts and settings and within that. Um, but if a lot of people, if you're used to Windows 7 and control panel. What you can do is you can come and right mouse button on the start menu down at the bottom. And then the first thing up here is control panel. So you can click on control panel to see that. Yes? So if you would put a picture in that account setting, yep. who would see that picture? Anybody that you've tied to your accounts. So anything that you're sharing via um, social media and stuff like that that you're using your account for. So like let's say Microsoft has set up where you can, when you set up Windows 8 or Windows 10, you can usually sign in with an email address and a password, and that's the same picture. So you put your picture in there, and anybody then anybody that you send that email to will have that picture attached with it. Like Outlook contacts? Mm -hmm. Outlook contacts, yep. So your Outlook contacts would have that picture in there as well. So things along those lines. Um, then you can go back to the original control panel and see everything as, as you were before. So you right mouse button, so you come down to the start menu, mm -hmm. and you right mouse button on it, and you go to control panel. And then they made some shortcuts. So if you needed to go to your network connections, you could just click on network connections instead of going through control panel to get to there, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So they kind of left it kind of usability between some power users and some people that probably don't get in enough in this stuff to still kind of figure things out to go through the different settings. Um, let's see, what else did I want to show? Okay, so the new Edge, uh, let's see here. Just a bit edge. So the Microsoft Edge, um, it's a lot more uh, slimmer browser, uh, still has the tabs at the top. Um, up here you got your settings, so you got your favorites bar, um, then you've got your Reading list. So if you have a bunch of stuff you want to save on here, you can create a reading list. Uh, things to go back and look at. Uh, your history, same as before, and then your downloads. It now shows you what you've downloaded as well through uh, through through the browser. So if you misplace something that you downloaded, you want to go back and find it again. 
it's easier to find it in here potentially than going and looking through all your downloads if you don't remember exactly what it was that you're looking for. Um, I've been using the Edge browser for majority of the stuff I've been doing, and I actually kind of like it. Uh, I go back and forth between Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge from the browser perspective, depending on if I have run into problems on either one. Uh, let's see what else. <coughs> Control panel, we'll talk about that, talk about Montana. Anybody else have any other questions here that they want to see something specific? Yeah, Mark. Uh, about security, the overall security is, okay, so with each new version, um, uh, Microsoft tries to make things better keyword is tries to um, they do a better job every iteration depending on how much code they use from the last version and so Windows 10 was kind of more of a rewrite um, then Windows 8 was um, more of a new development platform um, security wise as long as what I always recommend to all my clients is for any passwords um, you have a minimum of eight characters uppercase, lowercase, and a number, or an, uh, a special character. Something like that from a security perspective will save you a lot of grief of people getting into your system, uh, especially for passwords for your wireless or anything like that. Uh, yes? Uh, will it uh, support BitLocker? Uh, or does BitLocker come with 10? Yeah, it does. Uh, does BitLocker come with 10? I think there is a BitLocker for 10. Um, I think it's a, it's an add-on. I don't think it's part of 10. I have to check yeah. on that too. On eight one Pro, you get it. You yeah. Don't get it with the regular. So right. Not, do they have a Pro version? Yep, they have Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Pro, and Windows 10 Home are yeah. both there. So. Okay. so two more. Do they have yep. no pads or paint? Paint is still there. No pad is there. Solitaire is not. No solitaire. Pad. Solitaire is gone. They actually pulled Solitaire away. Um, it's an app that you can download. And run. It's still free, but if you want to get rid of the ads that are on there, um, it costs you. I think two ninety nine is the is the thing. So solitaire. yeah, so solitaire is gone. Um, which you know at times that was fun to play. You know when you ran out of things to do. Um, Have you gone into security stuff that won't work? Any? I used to use Kaspersky. When I downloaded ten, and Kaspersky went away. I just I am not I'm not the ones that I've been using I've been using a bass is the uh, is the uh, so the question was is is there any security uh, programs out there that don't run in 10 um, I have not heard of any but it sounds like the first scheme may have some issues um, I've been using a bass I've been running a bass on Windows 10 and not had any issues and Avast uh, does a does a decent job for what it for what you get. I mean, you can get by for free, and it still covers your web, your email, and your and your file blocking. And one other thing too for you guys to think about too is a lot of people are always concerned about viruses. It's really not viruses that we're all concerned about. It's really adware or malware uh, where it's more of Trojan stuff. It's not really viruses that we're looking for. It's more of that, so there, there's two there's two really common combinations. It's adware. It's where you get all the pop-ups and crap that come along, and that's that's probably one of the worst things that you that get that get most people. Um, and then you got the phishing phishing attacks, which leads into your into your um, the other side of that. Um, but a lot of times with the mal or with the adware stuff, you can run malware bytes, and that will clean up your system really well. And get rid of that. I ran into a client of mine. They had uh, they had a bunch of pop-ups and stuff on there, and it ran. I had to run it four times to get it cleaned up. And the first two times, it had over uh, three thousand entries, whether it was files, registry settings, and everything that it found. So it took three times to go through that to clean up the laptop. But once we got it cleaned up, it was running nice and fine for them again as well. Uh, is there any other questions from any of the other centers about anything? Question from Parks: Will okay. MS Edge replace Internet Explorer in all versions of Windows? 
All Windows version 10 and forward will have Edge and Internet Explorer. And um, probably with the next version of Microsoft, whatever, Windows 11, whatever their next version, they will probably stop supporting uh, Internet Explorer. They'll have the combination of the two for the time being, for the year, year and a half, for two years, depending on when the next release comes out from that. Okay. Um, any other questions that you guys have? Maybe apps we want to see or yeah, anything. in the background? Yeah. yeah. Is there any reason on a new computer to stay away from 10? No, on a new computer, I would go with 10. I would either it would either be it would either be Windows 7 or Windows 10, depending on where you're at. And there's not a lot of computers anymore that have Windows 7 on them. There's a few still, but anything new, Windows 10 will be just fine. It's it's a lot better than eight. How buggy is it? Uh, is it pretty good though? Yeah, I've been running it for um, <clears throat> since March, so I was in in the beta version, and I've been running it. On the apps I use, um, I use the full Adobe Suite. I use Office products. Um, I do other networking stuff, and I have, haven't had any problems with with uh, ten since then. So, yes. Uh, one of the design features of eight is that when you want to save a file, yeah, it makes it real easy to save it to OneDrive. If you want to save it on your computer, you have to go through an extra couple of clicks. Yeah, I find that irritating and really kind of invasive because I don't use OneDrive more than I want. Right. Am I going to be free of that? Yeah. OneDrive will still be integrate. OneDrive will still be there as an option, but you can set up where you're saying, like, if you're in Word or in your PDF. Yeah. Or just, yeah. yeah. If you're in those, you can choose. Um, I think your default location where you want to save your files to. Um, OneDrive is trying to, in your, and probably in your case, I'm just guessing that when you install OneDrive as part of your Office suite it became more than likely your default location where it wants to save everything to back up to make sure that all your files are stored. So if your computer ever crashes, um, you can get back to your files real easily. Yeah, why use other vendors? Yeah, that? I yeah. Trust one right, no, no, that's absolutely right. But what I'm getting at is is that by that default setting, you can go in and change okay. that default and setting. Office 365, so yep. you're saying it's probably just came that way. It's just came that way, yep, yep. As part of Office 365, they want you to use OneDrive as your default place to store all your files. So that way, your files, if you ever need to get out on another computer anywhere in the world, you can get access by logging into your OneDrive account online. So you can get access to your Word, Excel, and all that stuff up there. So that's that's the main feature of that. So, okay. Dax, do you have any questions? I was, you know, when you turn on your computer, this is a stupid question, yep. but it, it requires you to log in. Yep. That's that's you can change it so in Windows so when Microsoft came out with Windows 8 um, let me get this back here and we'll get back and I'll and I'll just talk um, so there's not much here to talk about anymore in the demos Joe you should ask Cortana if she has any questions <laughs> she likes her name yeah you can turn her off yep Okay, and then make sure we're necessary. I'll let you go ahead and put it back to to the. Do you want to put the camera back on? I don't know if she wishes she was Siri or not, um, but um, in answer to your question, what when Windows 8 came out, what they were really trying to do is get people to. Um, if they log in with a password, they're really trying to get them to use an email address. So if they ever need to reset their password or forgot it, they could do that easily. There are some ways that you can bypass that initial setup and get it so you, it's a local account. And then you can have it so it doesn't ask you for a password. But what I always recommend to people is, even if you're a local account, still have a password in there because you never know. If it's your desktop that's at your office, Probably don't, but it's just become more and more of a security issue to have passwords on everything. It's just it's your protection. But there are there are people that I still set it up. I say, okay, you're going to take the risk. I'm going to set it up where it doesn't ask for a password, and you can do that. 
So you can set it up where it doesn't ask for a password or it'll just come back right up like in Windows 7. You can set up with no password. I do have two other questions. Okay. <clears throat> um, how can I get an original desktop screen versus an app screen? I'm not quite sure. That um, I feel like the Windows 7. Like more like Windows 7. <laughs> That's what they have up there. Yeah, I don't think you can. That's that's integrated together. That's that's both of those are together with Windows 10. Okay. Is there anything that comes pre-installed and automatically backs up files, similar to Carbonite, where you don't um, have to manually back up the files? There is a backup that comes with Windows 10 that you can set up to schedule. It's a very generic backup. It's not like Carbonite where you can select individual files or folders. It's more a, uh, very generic from that perspective. What, what can be backed up. Um, so yeah, so there, there is something there, but it's not it's not as not as not as good. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, here's one other thing for you guys to think about too. If you do there when you're upgrading Windows 7 or Windows 10, um, there's multiple ways that you can upgrade. I've been upgrading via flash drive on all the devices. There are some devices out there that won't let you Upgrade via flash drive. You actually have to download it on that computer and do the upgrade. But once that upgrade is done, um, there's a program out there called um, Magic Jelly Bean. I remember right. I'm trying to think now. It's a key finder. So once you've upgraded to Windows 10, your serial number that's on your PC is no longer valid. It will never get you back to Windows uh, Windows 10 because that's not the same serial number they use. So what I recommend is once you've upgraded to Windows 10, is go out and download that program. It will go ahead and run, go through your entire registry and pull all of your serial numbers for all of your programs, so your office or stuff along those lines. And then make a copy of that because it'll also have your Windows 10 serial number. So if your hard drive ever crashes, you can download a Windows 10 uh, ISO disk and, and rebuild your computer from scratch as long as you have that serial number. Uh, no, magic jelly bean. Magic. magic. Just do magic uh, jelly bean key finder. It'll come up there. Uh, it's a great program. It's free for majority of the stuff. If you need, if you have Adobe programs or things that are a little bit more um, not specific, then you can buy the thirty dollar one. It'll pull all the keys for any any programs that you have installed in your computer. I recommend that anyway. Because then you have all the serial numbers for everything that you have installed on your computer. You don't ever have to worry about it. Magical jelly bean. Yes, magical jelly bean. Sorry. <laughs> thanks to Google. Yep, thanks to Google. <laughs> I, I do I, yeah. I just do the I just type it and start typing. Oh yeah, there it is. And I and I find it and I download it. So it's a great little program that will uh, help you save all your serial numbers and allow you to rebuild your system uh, quite easily. Yes, Jim. And you can uh, upgrade from XP, right? No, nope. no, nope. it's either Windows 7, 8, or 8.1, right to Windows 10. You could, but you, that computer, if it's running Windows XP, it's not worth upgrading. It's worth worth keeping in the side if you want to, uh, but that's about it. Since yes, encryption. Uh, Bitlocker may or may not come. Yep. Bitlocker is the one that I like the best because it's integrated right into to Microsoft. So they they have the, in my opinion, the most secure side of it because they're 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 doing the encryption right there at the hard drive level on their operating system. And that's the total hard drive mm -hmm. Yep. And if you lose that key, your host, yeah, yeah, you can't ever get back into it. You you basically say. Toss the drive on out. It's worse than crashing. Because at least crashing, if you know the key, you can at least get some data back. So. Now, a whole bunch of magic abilities you can come up with. None of them are listed on the official site. Yeah, there's a there's an official site. I don't remember it off the top of my head. I can email that out. Uh, that might be it. I can email that out to you guys as well. And I'll send. The slides, if anybody wants the slides out as well. And the answers to the general questions to everybody. Yep. And yep, answers to the general questions. Yep, they're writing them down for me. Okay. Do you like Office 365? I like Office 2013. I like the features of Office 365. 
I don't necessarily like the. There's two proponents of the world. There's people that, and this is the way I always explain to my customers: <coughs> you buy a PC, you're going to keep it for four years. Okay, so you go out and buy Office 2013, the uh, off with the Office, uh, the the one that comes with Outlook, for two hundred dollars, and you put that over a price of four years. That's fifty dollars a year, roughly, for that cost. If you go over Office 365. Yeah, you may get an upgrade in between, but a lot of people don't care about the upgrades. They care about what's working at that time. That Office 365 over that four-year period is going to cost you $400. So it's almost double the price if you look at it over the life of the product. I like the concept if people are looking at um, doing and wanting to have the latest and greatest all the time. Now, there always are new features in the newer versions. Like when I went from Outlook uh, 2010 to Outlook 2013, there were some great features that they really added into that that I really liked. Uh, some of the draft features, some of the things that you're responding to emails, allows you a lot easier to track and maintain in the in your list of stuff. So there was some really nice features in there. Was it worth an upgrade? Maybe, maybe not, depending on what you're doing. But that's the way I look at it. But the the integrated um, email calendar and contacts, the hosted exchange side of stuff. And some of the OneDrive business stuff, yes, absolutely, that's the best thing that, that's out there. Um, I really like that. It's really easily integrated. I like the fact I've been doing hosted exchange for, for probably seven years or better. And I did it on my server before I before they started moving everything to the cloud, before Office 365 came out. It's been the best thing that I've ever had. I can look at my email calendar contacts anywhere. You know any device, and if I delete it on one, it's gone. I don't have to worry about synchronization and stuff like that. So there are some very good features of Office 365. It just depends on what package and how often you're upgrading, what you're doing. Depends on what what you what I recommend. Yes. Can you, can you get posted exchange with Outlook? Yes. Four dollars a month per email address. Eight dollars a month if you month if you want to have it uh, backed up, archive versions. Yes, John. Uh, for older computers. How long will Microsoft support seven? Microsoft Office will support seven. So the question was, is how long uh, will Microsoft support Windows seven? Uh, Windows seven will probably be supported probably for another five years. Is gonna be my guess. One. Yeah. 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 It's usually it's a two year cycle, and since uh, eight really, they're really gonna try to really. I don't want to say force people, but they're really gonna take eight away from the support. Uh, support for eight will end actually probably about the same time Office or Windows 7 support ends. Okay. Just like XP, XP extended, extended, extended. So Windows 7 is such ingrained in businesses that you're going to see probably a longer lifespan on that one as well. Yes? When's the final date you can download 10 without being charged? July 29th of 2016. Mm -hmm. So the end of July. So I say be to be safe to make sure that you get it July 15th. Uh, where you won't have to where you won't have to pay for it. So, okay. Any other questions? All right. I think that covers it for me. Wow, Joe. All right. Good job, Joe. Okay. <laughs> So maybe on your survey and all the other centers too, just indicate if you would like Joe to forward the answers to all the questions as well as the the PowerPoint you said, correct? Oh, you talk about that? One, one thing I did forget about, um, out of everybody that attended either live or at the virtual centers, uh, we're doing a drawing for one hour free of my time. So that will go out uh, later today from virtual office centers. They'll send out an email and say who the winner of that uh, one hour free time is. So thanks. Yep, yep. Just make sure you're signed in. So make sure you got your email address, and that way you guys can get Free hour of my time to pick my brain and talk about any type of technology. Perfect. Thanks. Good job, Jeff. Sure. All right. Good job, Jeff. Thanks, everyone, for being here. And now next month, we're going to have our Kevin Ellinger, Think Creative, is going to be doing our Power Lunch on October 29th at noon. It's going to be our topic is revenue growth marketing for small businesses. And he's our, he's our 
Office Center's expert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll have a video power launch uh, next next month. Um, again, Joe, uh, first of all, a quick endorsement. Joe's done some work for us. Fascinating, You're really good. Obviously, knows what he does, even on the Mac side. So I mean, really, really good. Uh, so next work, we're actually talking about revenue growth, marketing for small businesses. Now, um, again, truly effective marketing goes far beyond just, uh, again, a brochure or a simple website online and a smile. Uh, it actually drives probable growth. Um, so one of some of the things I'm going to be sharing with you um, are how to really figure out what motivates buyers. Um, how to create a real competitive advantage, uh, power positioning that really drives profitable leads, um, establishing credibility and trust, and then three web changes you can make to help you really drive leads coming into your website more than just a contact page. So again, I've been in the industry for 30 years, I've been a company for the last 15, and there's a lot of really things that people make uh, that are traditional mistakes within marketing where they really waste their money. And so what we'll cover next time is really how to drive profits without wasting your marketing dollars. So, but the other thing we're actually yeah. really excited about is something that actually starts next week. So next week, there's a power networking that happens at Park. Park. And so we're offering a new service through Office Centers called Social Pop Videos. And so the really cool thing about this is that you can have professional high-end videos done, um, up to four, you know, 30-second kind of videos done in a, on a regular basis, and it only costs you $2.99 per month. Uh, again, so with our 12-month package, there's different pricing for you know, smaller segments of it. But the way it works out is that we're going to have a video camera set up, white background, everything else, two cameras set up, so we'll actually be able to edit between one and the other. Um, these will, again, be at part. You'll schedule half-hour time. Uh, during the half-hour time, we'll get you all set up. Uh, you'll actually have 20 minutes to you know, work on your speech and give, it, give your presentation. We'll have a teleprompter, so you give us your speech. We'll make sure it's on the teleprompter. You deliver your presentation. Um, if you screw up, we can actually cut back and forth, or we'll have you give it a couple times. And then we'll take that video, we'll add your custom logo to it, we'll animate that, and then we'll break it down into, say, a two-minute video, or two one-minutes, or, say, four 30-second videos. And then you can actually use those. And the nice part about it, you can use them on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, your website, um, sales meetings, email, YouTube, uh, your blog, these are the ways, you know, video is highly important when it comes to SEO. It's really great as far as, you know, um, delivering your message and positioning yourself really positively. And the idea of being able to do it this way, where you actually have high-end videos for such a really low cost through office centers, is really going to be a really effective way of doing it. And you can do it consistently. Uh, again, we'll be doing this on a monthly basis. So, again, if you sign up for the 12-month package, basically once a month you come in, We'll shoot your videos. We'll provide you the edited versions that you can use in any way you want. And that starts next week. You can actually sign up by going to the Office Center's virtual Office Center's webpage, go under events, uh, look under where the park networking is next week, and it says Social Pop Videos. And right there, kind of gives you a little bit more details about that. So we're excited about that starting next week. There'll be a demo video, um, an example on the yeah. This Week at OC as well. So yes, take a look and see kind of what they look like. Yeah. And see how it first. Woohoo! Nice Woohoo! Right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.